Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this GPU Tech electric bike pump. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost a thing extra. So if we look on the side, it shows the different modes. We have road bike is 50 to 150 psi, mountain bike is 2 to 50 psi, motorcycle is 0.1 to 3.7 bar, and customize is 2 to 150 psi. On the back here we have specs. You can pause and read through those. The battery capacity is 7.4 watt hours. This charges with USB. So let's get this open. So here we have the pump, hose, charge cable, and manual. Here we have some needle inflators and a Dunlap valve adapter. So let's take a quick look at the manual. So this shows the different parts. So we have air tube interface, type C input, LED light, real time air pressure, preset air pressure, unit display, battery display, mode display. Then we have preset plus and minus, LED light switch, power on off, mode selection, unit selection. So you'll want to read through the whole manual. I may not cover everything. This talks about how to use it. You press and hold the power button to turn it on or off. It has a battery display. If it's flashing red, you want to charge it before you use it. Now I'll probably try and keep this charged up when I go bike riding so it always has a charge in case I get a flat tire. So to start and stop the air, you press start stop in the middle there. Now this will also stop when it reaches a preset limit. This charges with USB type C. This supports Schrader, Presta, and Dunlop valves. Now this is for bicycles or motorcycles, sports equipment. This is not for airing up car tires. So it has a mode selection. We looked at those on the side of the box. Also has a unit switch. You long press the unit switch to switch between the pressure display units. This also has an LED light, so it has a regular and SOS mode. Use plus or minus to adjust the pressure. To reset the pressure, you simultaneously press the plus minus buttons. So this gives pressure ranges. You can typically find the pressure range on the side of a bicycle or motorcycle tire. And we have some troubleshooting. Okay, so here's the case for the pump. So we have these Velcro loops here. So you can put these around a tube on your bicycle. Let's open this up. So it also has these little flaps here to keep it closed on the side. So if we close this here, we can close it there too, make it a little more secure. Pull this out. So here we have the inflator. Pull the plastic off the front. So this feels like plastic here. We have the charge port. And the inflator nozzle goes there, and there are vents around the sides. Let's try and turn this on, so I'll press that middle button. Okay, so it's on. Then we have that mode button here. So we have icons. So that's mountain bike, road bike. So that's set to 100 PSI. Now if we want to adjust that, we can adjust it up or down. Let me hold it down. Okay, so that goes fast. Now we can also change the units, so I'll hold this down, and that will change the units. So I'm going to press the middle button again. That should turn the inflator on. Okay, I will demonstrate this on an actual tire. I just wanted to show how it turns it on. And then here we have the light button, so I'll press it. It turns on that light. I'll press it again. We have the SOS mode again, and it turns it off. So this light isn't meant for search and rescue, but if it's nighttime, you have a flat, you have that light there so you can illuminate to help get everything threaded on to fill your tire up. So it's nice they include that. And it really doesn't add a lot of space or weight to this. So if we want to charge this up, you just want to use a USB charger. So you can use a phone charger, a wall charger that has USB on it, car, RV, they're pretty standard. We'll plug in there and we'll plug in here. And now it's charging, it's charging at 0.48 amps. So that can vary depending on the state of charge of the inflator. So here's the hose that says hot on here. As this inflates, this can get hot. So keep that in mind, but we'll, Thread this in. Okay, get that tight. And here we have the valve. So these two pieces thread apart. When it's threaded all the way in, this is the Schrader mode. So that's what you'd see on car tires and mid to lower end bicycles. Now I said car tires, but this is not for cars. This is for bicycles. The compressor in this is smaller to make it more portable for bicycles. So then if you have Presta, you unscrew this and that's for Presta. And if you have Dunlop, we have the adapter in here. Now in the US, we don't see a lot of Dunlop, at least I haven't. There might be things that use it, but that will go in when it's in Schrader mode and that will screw in here. So they have the Dunlop adapter. And then of course we have the needle valve for sports equipment. So you can screw that in there. So I'll unscrew this. Let's put this in the bag here. Let's see how the hose fits in the bag. 
just kind of goes onto the side like that. Looks nice. Oh, and it's nice it has these little flaps because of that too, so that's not flying out on you. Okay, so that's ready to mount on a bike. So I'm gonna get this charged up and then we'll test it out on some bike tires. Okay, so I'm out here at my bike and I've mounted this on the top tube. So there is a little bit of this strap hanging over. You could trim that back if you think you'll never need it longer, but it has these grippy bumps here to pad it against your frame. Now this could slide forward a little bit. My frame dips down and every frame is gonna be a little bit different. So you have to look at your frame and see where and how you'll want to carry it. But I think this is probably where I'll carry it. So let's pull this out. And let's test airing up a tire. Okay, so here I am at the back tire. Now you can look on the sidewall of the tire, somewhere it should tell the pressure. This here says 75 PSI maximum, and then down here it says minimum 50, 75 max PSI. So we'll attach the hose to the inflator. We'll turn it on. We're already in bicycle mode. If we weren't, we'd switch to it like so. It's set to 80 PSI. So I'm just gonna inflate this to 70 especially on mountain bike tires and hybrid tires and such, there's going to be a range and you don't have to run them at the max pressure. So we're at 70, I'll pull the valve cap off and we'll screw this on the valve. Okay, so it's showing the pressure, we're at 13 PSI. So I'll hit this middle button to start inflating it. Okay, so that took about two minutes and 35 seconds. Now, one thing to point out is I'm holding this. Typically, you could put the valve so it's down near the ground and you could set this on the ground. You could let this inflate while you're putting water in your water bottle and getting your bag ready and other stuff. You don't have to babysit this. And then you'll hear it kick off. We can unscrew this here. I don't know how much is going to leak out. So I'm going to start doing it a little bit slow and then I'll speed up if it starts leaking. There was just a tiny little bit of a sound as I was taking it off slowly. Maybe if I took it off a little bit faster, we wouldn't even have that. But I'd say that's a lot less than a lot of inflators would have. So that's nice. You really don't want to undo all the work you just did. Now this was really low because it's off season. If you're just topping off your tires, it's going to be quite a bit faster than three minutes. Now let's try this on a higher pressure tire with a Presta valve. Okay, so this is a road bike. This hasn't been ridden in a little while. I typically ride my hybrid bike. So I'll open up the Presta valve. I'll open this up, let's see how far that is. So when that unscrews all the way, it kind of locks into that position. So I think that's the Presta mode, like that. So let's try and stick that on there. Now I don't know if that thread's on, let's see. I don't see any threads, I may just need to hold that on there. Now for this one, the pressure is gonna be higher. Although this hasn't been inflated a while, I'm gonna inflate this, then I'm going to deflate it, just to help the tire seat. So if I hold this on here, it's holding the pressure and let me pull it off. Okay, so I'm just going to inspect the tire all the way around. Make sure it's seated. It looks good. I'll deflate it. I like to do that when I change a tire too. So I'll put the valve back on like so and I'll turn the pressure up here. So we're at around 70 PSI. Now I could ride on that if I had a flat and I had to refill it. I accidentally turned the flashlight on here too. Well, while we have the flashlight on, let me turn my camera light off. This is a pretty dark area here. So here you can see the flashlight. I'll turn it off. That's with it off and that's with it on. So you can see if you're trying to put this on here, you can aim it towards the valve. Now, if you have an emergency, you can turn this on to help people find you. So our battery is red, meaning we need to recharge it. So I filled this one almost full and I filled the other one 70 out of 125 PSI. So this isn't really made to fill a fleet of tires. This could be good for topping off your tires or if you have a flat tire, filling it back up. So if I hadn't filled up my hybrid tire, I would have been able to put more air in my road bike tire. Okay, so I'm back at my bike and I've recharged the inflator. 
Okay, I realized I wasn't quite using this right. I pressed it on, and I think I tried to turn it before, but I wasn't pressing down far enough. So you need to press this down, and then this will thread on, and it will fit really tight. So I was kind of thinking maybe this didn't work very well. It was operator error. Once you get this on there, it doesn't leak, and it puts all of the air in the tire. So let's put some more air in this. I don't know how much battery I have left. Let's try the rear tire. Okay, I think we got, what was it, 118? I forget. We got up really close, didn't quite get to 125. That's after we took the front tire from 70 to 125. So we could almost fill both of these up from absolutely flat to 125. So if you get one of these and you're having trouble with that valve, make sure it's open all the way, make sure you're pressing it on and then rotating it. And of course that's just for the Presta, the Schrader, you just thread it on. So that was the GPU Tech electric bike pump. I don't get tons of flats when I bike, but when they do happen, they're always inconvenient. Airing up a tire with a manual bike pump can be very tedious, and it can also take a lot of time, especially if the weather's bad or it's near dark. You wanna get your tire inflated as quick as possible. I think this is gonna be a nice addition to my bike gear when I go riding. I like how easy this was to use. You just set the pressure, you hit the button, it inflates your tire, and it stops when it's done. As you saw, I aired up a couple different tires with this. I think a bike pump like this will also be great for making friends along the trail. If I see anyone with a flat tire pumping up their tire with a manual pump, I'll have to stop and let them borrow this. It's just the right thing to do, and I would love if someone did that for me if I had a flat tire. Now, if you don't want to carry a pump like this, this can also be great just to put in your trunk to air up your tires before you go on a ride. This takes up quite a bit less room than a floor pump, and it's a lot easier. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.